Good morning, Wayne Dorban here from beautiful Northern Colorado in the early spring. And boy, did we have some wind yesterday. I think we've talked about wind before um, and how much of an issue it can be for us. And we had a little bit yesterday. It's interesting, I see so many new and different things on Blab every time I come on. Yesterday, um, last night, as we did our last Economics in Action Blab um, and livecast with Jen and Phil from Pennsylvania about Rent the Chicken, and you really wanna go back and watch that if you can, there wasn't the option to do share the last 30 seconds. And now as I put it up right now, there is the option to do share the last 30 seconds. So obviously the system is changing on a regular basis. So good morning. We're gonna do a half an hour this morning and we're gonna focus on primarily fish farming that we started talking about um, just the other morning. And again, we are now going to be doing these economic and action live casts on a regular basis, usually in the mornings, usually quite early in some parts of the country of the United States. In the world, it's you name the time. We really want this to be a worldwide experience live for people. So if you're out there and you've heard about this, tell your friends about it and come on board with us. Right now, that live chat looks a little vacant with me being here alone. And um, I will uh, just keep working and working and working and we will build this up because we know how important that this topic, these topics of economics are. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. What is economics? You're right, I paused. Pausing is not comfortable when you're talking online or when you're talking in a live audience of any kind because everybody's thinking, what? Why is he pausing? What's wrong? Did I miss something? I paused because it's really an amazing word. I have gone back and forth over and over and over trying to decide what is the right word to use to describe what we're doing as our goal is to do really two things, one of them really broad and the other one a little more narrow. And that's the big one. We are attempting to show people how to make a little bit of money making the, making the planet better. And what's a little bit of money? I think the idea there, and Dennis Weaver, our founder said it in so much better way than I ever can is that a little bit of money is an appropriate amount. It's an amount that will create a livelihood for you as an entrepreneur that want to make the planet better. A fair living wage for wherever you're at in the world. That's what making a little bit of money, making the planet better is. So that's Dennis Weaver's definition of the word colonomics. Well, we've decided that we're going to focus on a little bit more narrow perspective of that on a day to day basis, although we're very interested in working with and helping entrepreneurs who have any kinds of ideas at all about how to do that, how to make a little bit of money, making the planet better. We've decided to focus on what I'll call the food and ag sector. And as I said, at a place that I was speaking last week, I can't think of any other industry, if you were going to describe one, and in this case being food and agriculture, that is that has involvement of more people in the world. That's right. I can't think of one. Not another industry that has as broad of an involvement of as many people in the world. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna make a really bold statement. Every person in the world is involved in the food and agriculture industry. Oh, come on, Wayne, how can you, how can you say that? How can you say that every person in the world is involved in the food and ag business? a one-day-old baby, 
a hundred year old man. I'm going to say man, because mostly it's women that live to be over a hundred. Yes. Every person, if you think about it just a little, you'll, you'll know what I, why I'm saying is accurate. Why, what I'm saying is accurate. Every person. Why? Because we all eat. We all have to eat. Now, as we know, a billion of the seven plus billion people in the world wake up every morning starving, not eating enough. You don't think they're involved in the food and agriculture industry? They're more involved than most. They're involved for survival. That's what we want to eliminate. We want to show the world that they can feed themselves. So again, the little more narrow perspective of the Institute of Economics and of the, of the topic of economics is to teach the world to feed itself. You know that the world did, the world knew how to feed itself not that long ago. It had to because food production, agriculture was so close to everyone. It had to be. We couldn't transport things for great distances. We couldn't store things. We couldn't preserve things in the way that we do now. So food production happened so much closer to home than it does today. All right, well, enough of my soapbox for the day. Let's get on to fish farming. So if you recall, in our last lesson, we were talking about the first, what I'll call physical steps. If you're just wanting to have a fish farm at wherever you're at in the world now. And I said, the first thing you needed to do was to, to try a test pit in the ground. If you're going to be using a pond as your form of aquaculture production. Let's back up a bit. Let's start back a little further. What should you really first be doing? First, don't be so impetuous and think, I have to do it today. I got to keep going today. Now, again, I said that it's good to fail at times. It's not, it's not horrible. Thomas Edison did it all the time as he was, as he was moving towards creating a light bulb. And so maybe that's the way you are. It is the way I am. I have done it many, many times. Failing and then succeeding in the long run is not uh, against my nature. However, you have so much more of a chance for success if you do some planning. So I would highly recommend that you start out your fish farming process by first, use the internet to do research. Oh my gosh, there is so much that you can do. I'm going to uh, open up this other screen. I'm gonna actually put myself into the background and I'm just gonna do a couple little things for you just to show you how, how much information that you can get out there real quickly. So I'm gonna switch over to my other camera, which is on the screen here and transfer to that. And then I'm going to start doing a little searching on the internet and uh, let you see some things. So um, if you notice, you're seeing the screen here, but we're gonna do a Google search. So we're just gonna do a Google search for fish farming. So just put in the term fish farming. Let's even make it small. Let's put home fish farming. I'm doing a Google search for home fish farming. Whoa, guess what comes up right at the top? Us. <laughs> Notice that that's a, uh, a paid ad. We, um, we believe in this so strongly that we'll put our own hard earned money into this on a daily basis because we want to attract uh, some interest. So I would highly recommend you read that article if you haven't already. Maybe that's even why you're here. But, but look at this. Backyard fish farming, homesteading and livestock, raising fish for food, backyard fish farming for survival, home tilapia. Oh, that's a cool one. Let's look at that real quick. Backyard fish farming for survival. So we're going to go to that website. And here's an article written in the survivalist about raising fish for food, backyard fish farming for, for survival. Raising fish for survival food has gained um, popularity in recent years as more people seek to provide a healthy food source for their families. 
Um, and again, it, it gives just some basic details. Raising fish in a home pond. Um, let's just see, I'm just quickly, I've never seen this article. Raise fish ponds in warmer climates, raising fish in tanks, which is what I was gonna talk a little bit about here in a minute. Um, filter systems for raising fish in tanks. This is really broad, which it makes sense it would be. Um, best breeds for raising fish. Um, again, just really a broad description. Um, not any real details, but again, th these are the kinds of things that you should go out and look at. Um, I will tell you that another thing, so we're gonna move out of this, that you really ought to do is look at videos. So we're gonna switch back here and instead of searching for um, articles, I'm gonna do a Google search for home fish farming and look at all these videos, home tilapia production with DIY small scale aquaculture, um, DIY home aquaculture, how to build a backyard fish farm from Howcast. How long are some of these? Let's look at C1 real quick that we could actually have play. Um, there's a backyard tilapia farm, three hour, three minutes and 15 seconds. Look at it's had 206,000 views. So this is an in-text swimming pool. Hi, I'm Mike and this is yeah. my backyard tilapia fish farm. I'm gonna actually do a full screen here of this. And this is what I have here. here. It's a $100 pool so for target. He's got a $100 pool. Uh, for a I've got a I don't know what you're hearing with this. 1900 gallon per hour pump. This is a two inch PVC pipe. And so he's, this is a. Uh, he's got some filter. This is a filter. Is it's a, essentially a bioreactor. Three gallon uh, feed trough. Uh, the pipe pumps into the bottom. And I've got uh, air conditioning filters and a hole cut out on the top. Works pretty good. It's a really simplistic right now, system. I'm, just did a water change and I'm filling it back up. He hasn't told us where he's at. Solar cover over. on here. He's got it's a so cover. Boy, all these things make total sense. This summer, guy's you know, doing things right. Southwest Florida. Yeah, he just said he's in Southwest Florida. See, so I got my temperature here. Right now, the water is about 78 degrees. So it's 78 degree water, if you didn't hear that. Again, this is really yeah, simple. I've got a, uh, a heater that I built. <laughs> this I, is cool. I don't really need to use it right now, but uh, maybe in uh, late January, I might have to turn it on at night. It's uh, basically it's a turkey fryer, uh, copper tube uh, rolled up. And you turn the propane on, and the water comes out really hot. It's like he pumps water directly into it. That's not what I would highly recommend, but it can work. Uh, in the summer, I'm going to put a uh, tent over it to keep the algae from growing. Okay, it sounds like he and, hasn't uh, run through the summer yet. Uh, chicken wire in case of uh, eagles and egrets. <laughs> See, I've got about 80 fish in here. Some are as big as uh, 12 to 14 inches, while others are maybe two or three inches. Sure, and say yes, 80 fish, 80 tilapia, several two to three inches, and some up to 12 to 14 inches. I don't know. He's not finding they like to hide in. They're in some. You can see one right there. He's got some PVC pipe that he's got in there for him to hide in. Not seeing anything here that is not something you might think about. He's going to have some problems with this. Still, oh, way too much algae already. Don't know how old this system is, but he's going to have to be really careful about that. And that's it. That's the end of it. So there was a little, a little uh, video about uh, how DIY tilapia that's had 206,000 views. Let's see when was this published. Um, it's hard to tell right now.
I'm going to show you just some little tricks. I'm going to go to his site and we'll see when this was published. Um, it looks like he's doing a bunch of survivalist kinds of things. Let's look at his videos and see when he did this. Um, it looks like it's not new, frankly. Yeah, a year ago, load more. He's made a lot of videos here. So let's see what else we might find. Backaways. So two years ago, we're still not finding it. Here we go. Backyard tilapia fish farm. That's an update. So it looks like he's continuing to do updates. Looks like this first one. Here it is. It's 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 the very first one he did five years ago. It's had two hundred six thousand views, and which means a lot of people have looked at it. Um, don't know what he's doing now. Um, it looks like let's see. Take him all the way up till today, and uh, he said he just. Uh, one with a spear. So it looks like he, he may have even moved, actually, interestingly. Um, and uh, he's eating bugs in Carolina Reapers that he did 11 months ago. Obviously, that one didn't go over as well. But the point is, you should go out and find videos like that. There wasn't anything on that video that I would say is inappropriate for um, the whole idea of fish farming. And you know, there's a lot of that out there. So you need to do that kind of research. So do your research and um, and then write a plan. And again, I'm not going to talk about and show it online um, here right now, but uh, you can find business plans for free on the Internet. Again, I just did one simple little search and found a really pretty good video that you could you could do that. You could do what that guy did for one hundred dollars and uh, and have yourself a start on a home fish farm. Uh, let's see if he's that, by the way, that tank would raise a lot more than 80 fish. Um, you could probably put in that tank easily 500 fish. Tilapia would be a good idea if you were in a climate where they would work because um, they, would, they would not eat each other. You could have all different kinds of sizes. It would be easy to harvest that that kind of a system. So that's a tank system, not a pond. Remember my uh, little story from the first time we did this. Um, somebody else is on. Hey, Mark, good to see you, man. Um, remember that I said that that if you took a tank like that and put it in the ground, which I tried to do one time, you need to plan. You need to think about it because I didn't think about the uneven pressure that would build up around it. Um, as water got in next to it and I, it caused it to collapse. And frankly, the pool was almost identical to that one that you just saw there. It was an in-text pool. So planning, do that in advance. Do research. You can do it online. You can work with people like us. You can take courses. Um, we're going to be offering all kinds of courses and, and, and we're recording. That's what we're doing right now is we're recording a little bit of what we're going to use for a course that will be in both a written form, in the form of a book, um, in the form of transcripted um, written material, in the form of uh, podcast type of material, as well as uh, video as we're doing right now. So plan. Secondly, um, do a business plan after you've done research and planning. So I'm sorry, do research first and then do planning. And then start to move ahead with these things that we started to talk about, um, which would be um, uh, do a test pit first if you're going to do a pond or if you're going to do a tank. That was a tank that we just saw. Um, then you need to be thinking about a whole bunch of other things that we're going to get into. But let's say you're going to do a pond and you just did the test pit and it didn't work well. So what are some things that you could do to now allow your your pond to hold water? Well, the easiest thing would be to, to do would be to line it. And you know what? You can do that pretty inexpensively. Uh, you can use um, plastic that you could buy at a standard um, discount kind of a, a store like a Home Depot, which, again, if you're in another place in the world, you probably have something like that, a large place that sells all kinds of, of materials that you'd use around the house uh, or around um, a business situation. And you should buy at least um, 40 mil uh, material, and that's available, relatively inexpensive. I would recommend that it be a dark color rather than light. 
and probably make it a couple of layers. And you would dig your pond for whatever size that you wanted it to be, and you would line it. Now, let's talk a little bit about digging at first. I talked about this before. I want you to always be thinking about how are you going to harvest the fish? This is the planning, thinking ahead. For a pond in the ground, it's probably not going to be so easy to manually drain it. With a pump that you have some kind of power for, you could pump the water out of it. And by the way, I would recommend that one of the things you think about early on is don't just pump water out and then bring new water in. New water isn't always good. As a matter of fact, a, a more conditioned system is always better than new. So if you were to start with brand new water, that's not as good as starting with water that fish have already lived in and been comfortable and doing well in. So um, I got distracted by one of my screens telling me that I have something going on in 10 minutes. So if you're going to look for a lining, again, the simplest thing to do, the cheapest thing would be to go to a department store and buy something that is a lining um, that is 40 mil um, plastic that you would buy to uh, that plastic's usually used for all kinds of purposes. Usually it comes in 10 foot widths. That could be a problem um, if you had a, a, a tank that was, let's say, or a pond that was three meters or five meters in size because a 10 foot or two and a half meter uh, size, three meter size would not be enough. So you need to get a wider, probably at least um, six, six meters or so in width. And then double line it, put a couple of liners, uh, a couple of layers. But again, going back to planning, there's a step that should precede that. As you dig a hole, you're going to very likely have some sharp objects that are going to stick out of some of the edges of it. And therefore, you should line it. And you should line it with something that will protect that liner, the, the water uh, the water retention liner from, um, from getting punctured. Well, how can you do that? Go find some, go find some carpet at places where people are throwing it away. What we call that is dumpster diving. I guarantee, because I've done it several times, more than several times, I've found waste carpet very easily at carpet stores in their dumpsters behind their location. You can ask your friends, try to borrow it, put an ad up on Craigslist saying that you want to get free carpet. Craigslist is still free to put things, ads up that ask for free things. Craigslist is charging now for other kinds of ads. Get yourself some carpet and lay it down on the bottoms and on the sides of your, of your pond. Now, again, back to the configuration of the pond. If as much as possible, you want that pond to have vertical sides and a horizontal bottom. It, the bottom could be a little curved, but the straighter it is, the better off you're going to be. And the more vertical the walls are, the better off you're going to be because that's going to make it easier for you to harvest fish. Because again, in a pond, it might be difficult for you to drain it. And if you have vertical and horizontal sides and bottom, you can then make yourself a collection device, a net, which we'll talk about later, where the fish won't be able to avoid it by swimming around it. And that's something, again, in your planning that you need to think about. So as you dig that pond, you would want the sides to be as much vertical on the sides and horizontal on the bottom. And then you're going to want to line it with a, a carpet that, again, look at. Here's another thing to think about. Make sure there aren't staples left in that carpet if it's used. If it's been taken out of somewhere, which is likely why it's being thrown away, then you're going to find staples in it. By the way, getting used carpet is a wonderful economic activity. You're recycling, you're reusing. That stuff's going to go to a landfill. Most of it's made out of synthetic material and it's going to stay there for centuries. It won't degrade and it's going to just use up valuable space cause some potential pollution in the future. So you're doing a great thing by reusing old carpet. And it, people are tearing carpet out of places anywhere you are in the world all the time, even if you're in a place in the world where the economics aren't as good as other places. So line it with the carpet and then use a plastic liner. Again, plan first. 
Another way, we're going to end up today, we've got a couple more minutes left here, by a, a more natural way to line. And that is you could mix a solution of what's called bentonite, which is a natural um, form of material that would that you could get, uh, you could purchase bentonite rel relatively cheaply, or you could actually find it that you could line the sides and the bottom of your pond with. Now that's going to be more difficult when you have really vertical sides. So if you have a pond that has a more concave circumstance, which is something you might do if you do have a way to, to drain it, because you're probably going to harvest, the easiest way to harvest your fish is actually by draining the pond and then going in and actually standing in it and having it very shallow enough that you see the fish in it when you're harvesting them. Uh, that's going to always be the easiest way to harvest. Netting works well if you have a fairly dense population of fish in the tank or in the pond, but you may not have that. You probably won't have that in a small system that you're going to be creating at home initially. By the way, I would highly recommend that even if you have aspirations to have a very large production facility at some point, that you start out on the small side and and start with system that is um, something that you consider an experiment and it's more on a hobby basis at first but if you're needing food for survival it will provide you food for survival so we're getting close to our end time for the day um, i'm going to end by doing one more little promo and i did a little bit of it at the first so i'm going to go back to the theme of that which is economics why should you be interested in economics we are a nonprofit organization, the Institute of Economics. We, um, we raise money uh, through donations and we also earn money. We, we generate money through entrepreneurial ventures. However, nobody takes money home. There are no, uh, in a nonprofit 501c3 in the United States, no shareholder. There are no shareholders. In my role as, as the CEO, I don't take money home. Um, I don't get a dividend at the end of the year. Um, I am doing this as a labor of love and I generate income from other means. I'm, my businesses are some of those entrepreneurial businesses that, that the Institute actually helps provide support for. So we need funding. Anything you can do to help us, um, whether it's ideas, whether it's volunteer time. Um, we have a very active um, website. Mark has put the name of that site up on the chat right now. And you can go there and you can read thousands of articles that we've published about any topic you can imagine in the whole area of economics. And I'd highly recommend that you do that. So think about us, get involved with us. Think about why this word is one that the spell checks should not be saying that you're misspelling something when you put the word economics in. That's our goal. When we reach the point where Word and all the normal spell checking systems out there, I have no idea how many there are. When you write the word economics in a sentence, doesn't say that you've misspelled eco economics or something else, ecology, ecologist, something. It doesn't try to change your word and autocorrect. When that happens, we've reached the point where economics is actually a viable term out in society. So I'm going to end for now. This has been fun as always. Again, we'll be doing this tomorrow morning again. It'll actually be same time very early um, in some parts of the world and very late in others and just about the right time in others. There will be a replay. Uh, Mark is going to be, Mark and I are actually going to talk about this today. We're going to start publishing these hopefully every day on our website. And, um, and we're probably actually going to even create another site, which we call a smart member site that we'll also be publishing them on. And <clears throat> again, highly recommend go visit us and then end with, if you're interested in fish farming, keep coming back in the morning, tell your friends about this. We're or the, whatever time of the day it is for you, because we're going to go all the way through this little course. And then we're going to be writing a book. We're going to be writing, uh, doing editing of these videos, and making them available, ah, available for the public. Thanks so much. Go back and watch the, the um, replay of Jen and Phil from last night. We've got, 
I think it's over a hundred now previous replays that you could go back and look at of topics that are all over in the economics realm. Do research, protect the planet, make the planet better, make a little money making the planet better. And we'll say adios, hasta luego muchacho, goodbye, and see you tomorrow.